Hi everybody and welcome to the world of Micah. This is something I've been wanting to do for quite some time. Starting off the day at Elvis Presley's Graceland. Today we are going to be doing several things and I'm going to be mixing this into a series of videos. Lots of history, lots of photo comparisons, lots of tours that I'm going to do and bring you guys I'm excited. I'm a massive, massive Elvis fan. Been a big Elvis fan since I was a little boy growing up in Mississippi. And today, we are doing a lot. But I'm gonna head inside now, and you guys are gonna get the tag along. Now. Let's take a closer look. I will tell you this. They have completely changed the outside here. Got a brand new gate to the complex here with the TCB. Stood for taking care of business. The symbol that Elvis had Priscilla draw up and he would later turn into a necklace and a kind of a symbol for him and he would give it to all of his friends and bodyguards. This is unreal. The Graceland experience, the new complex. Last time I was here was around 2010 and none of this was here. It's completely changed a good bit. Since it is the holidays, there are decorations and everything up. We're heading over to the ticketing center where we are going to be heading into Graceland, the home of Elvis Aaron Presley. Now this is Minnie Mae's sweets. Minnie Mae is Elvis's, Elvis's grandmother. They named, they named this after his grandmother. It's pretty cool. Back the last time I was here, there was just one diner. The diner was sitting around somewhere around in here. It's where you could get a peanut butter and banana sandwich. All right, heading into the ticketing. And heading over to Graceland. Oh wow, there's Vernon Steakhouse. That's awesome, it's a smokehouse. Vernon is Elvis's dad, his father. I can't get over this. They have changed so much here. All right. Let's go get the tickets. So the first thing on the tour is they have you go and stand in this queue. Then they take you outside after you see a short film. As you can see here, it says, please step on the blue suede shoes. I thought that was kind of fun. And then you board your tram, your bus, that will take you across Elvis Presley Boulevard. This is inside the, the tram here. You will be crossing Elvis Presley Boulevard, heading into the gates of Graceland. I recently did a video talking about the gates of Graceland. You guys want to see that video the, the link is above as we were heading up you can see some of the holiday decorations they had a, a nativity scene set up and another sign that said Merry Christmas Elvis on it that is original from when Elvis was still living at Graceland now that tram will take you right up to the, the front steps of the house that Elvis Aaron Presley lived in until 1977 now your Graceland guide is now John Stamos. When I first started doing this tour as a kid, it was a cassette tape, and that was kind of wonky because you would get lost as you were doing the tour because if you didn't keep up with stopping and pressing play on your cassette tape or keep up with the actual tour, it would just get all <laughs> over the place. Then I believe they went on to a code system where you would type in an actual code, a number, and it would read off something for you. And then now you have, in my opinion, the best way to experience Graceland, John Stamos, huge Elvis fan. There's pictures on there, there's behind the scenes stuff, there's everything you need to really capture the essence of Graceland. Now while I was on the tour, I didn't do it, but I did look on Abby's just because I was too worried about taking photos and kind of taking it in quietly. If you don't do the audio tour, the house is very quiet. And it's, for an Elvis fan, something special. But let's get inside the house. These are the front steps. Elvis's bedroom was the top right window there. This is the front door. Now as you walk through the front door, pay attention to the stained glass. We'll get to that in just a moment. Heading into the living room now. The living room to the right, that's a 15 foot custom built sofa. It was originally blue metallic and cost $1,300. Now Elvis bought it in 1957 when he moved into Graceland. He later had it covered in what you see now, the white color. Now during the holiday season, the blue drapes that are normally in Graceland Elvis always changed those out to a vibrant red, and that tradition still remains true today. As you can see in the photograph, the drapes and everything are red. Now the stained glass peacock panels between the living room and the music room, which the music room has the TV and the grand piano in the back. If you don't have access to that, you kind of have to see everything from one 
focal point. It's kind of neat how they do it though. Now that stained glass that I was talking about, you can see it here as well. These are the famous peacock panels. These things are, for Elvis fans, really well known. They've made t-shirts with them. They actually make replica of these peacock panels. These were added into Graceland in, in October of 1974. The work was done by Lakoff Stained Glass Company of Memphis and I believe it cost around $9,000. Now the reason Elvis added the peacocks is because in 1974 Elvis was really studying a lot of religion and, and really getting into let's just say depths of our universe and everything and peacocks were Christian symbol of eternal life and resurrection. So that's why Elvis wanted to add the peacocks to the music room leading into the living room. Now above this fireplace here, this is really neat. I believe that clock you see there was given to Elvis by a longtime friend and radio disc jockey, George Klein, or GK, as Elvis referred to him as. You can see a young Elvis Presley here, probably from 1957, if I had to guess. And then you can see also a photograph of Vernon and Gladys, his parents. Now these are the famous steps. You are not allowed to go to the second floor of Graceland. They've had that tradition since they opened in 1982. Elvis kind of had this tradition when he was still living there. Not many people were allowed upstairs. He had everyone downstairs. Elvis always made a grand entrance. When he came downstairs, he was fully dressed, presentable, looking like Elvis. And I think the family likes to keep that that privacy to this day. In that photograph you see of Elvis there on the staircase, he's actually holding a bicycle in that photo. It's a young Elvis Presley before he dyed his hair black. I'd say that photo was probably from 55 or 56, if I had to guess. This is another angle looking up. And yes, Elvis's bedroom was upstairs. Now this is the hallway here. Now this was Vernon and Gladys's room for about a year until she died in 1958. Minnie Mae Presley lived here until she passed away in Graceland in 1980 at the age of 90. Now there is a photograph you can see there on the chest of drawers, black and white photograph. That was a picture of Elvis. In 1940, he was five years old. I love the purple accents and everything in this room. They also have some dresses in here. I believe they belong to either Minnie Mae or Gladys. And of course, the pink poodle bathroom. Who doesn't love that? Now, this is the dining room here. You can see they added the red drapes here as well. Elvis always sat at the head of the table. The, the thing I remember as a kid from old tours of Graceland is they said he liked to be able to see the television set in the corner. So he always liked to to sit at the head of the table so he could watch TV while they were having dinner. <laughs> now while you're moving into the, the next room we're going into, you can see a staircase. There's a lot of different staircases. Graceland is almost like a, a house of clue. You're, you're, you know, the more you go, the more you figure out where everything is, but it's kind of unreal to see how everything flows through this house. There's so many secret stairways and, and rooms and closets that you think are bedrooms and so on and so forth. Now the next room we are moving into is the kitchen. This is the way it looked in 1974. This kitchen had all the latest gadgets in the 70s, including a early model microwave. Now the three stained glass overhead lighting fixtures were purchased in 74, and that chandelier we saw in the dining room was also purchased on that same trip. Now originally, this kitchen was not included as a part of the Graceland tour. Now when Aunt Delta was Vernon's sister, she still lived in the mansion when it was open to the public. And her room was just off the kitchen. Delta died in 1993 and the kitchen was open to tours in 1995. So if you visited Graceland from 1982 to 1995, you would not see the kitchen. A little interesting fact for you. The kitchen is definitely 1970s. I mean, it's just so cool. There's TVs everywhere. And one thing I do love is all the original lighting fixtures and everything they still have. Knobs, telephones, security cameras. They have everything still here. It's pretty cool to see that that stuff, you know, survived all these years and they've kept it kind of preserved so you could get a feel of what it was like when Elvis was here. I'm sure the red telephone was a way to call Elvis in his room because I know he could call down to the kitchen any time and get food sent right up to his room. Now inside this drawer right here, the reason I took a photo of this, if you actually reach over and open that drawer, which you're not allowed to and I'm not saying to, there's a video showing the archivist doing it, which is the way I know. But if you open that drawer, Lisa Marie Presley signed her name there. And it's just something that's really cool that just stays in the house. Lisa's name is, is you know, a, a, as kids do. When you learn to write your name, you write it everywhere. And Lisa, I guess, wanted to do that inside <laughs> this drawer. 
probably when she was coloring. Now this staircase can make you very, very dizzy. We were heading down to the, the TV room and there's a long staircase with a lot of mirrors down there. I almost wanted to see exactly what he looked like. Every angle, I guess, as he was going to and from the TV room. Love the TV room. I love the mirrors. I love the TCB lightning bolt. I love the colors. I love the huge sofa. And of course, who doesn't like three television sets. Now from what I read online, Elvis borrowed the idea of getting three TV sets from US President Lyndon Johnson. Now Elvis would like to keep up with the news and watching football and boxing. He also liked to watch I Love Lucy, The Andy Griffith Show, and The Curl Burnett Show. Something he and I both have in common. Now this room is really not that big, but the mirror effect makes it look a whole lot bigger. Yes, that is yellow shag carpet. And there is track lighting and chrome arc lamps in this room, which give it a little bit of a Elvis flair. Now, in addition to the television sets, there also is a stereo system with the built-in radio home jukebox system that is wired to speakers all over the mansion. There's also a pull-down movie screen. At one point, there was a projector. As you can see in this photograph, I, I kind of asked the guy if I could go back and see, and he said, yeah. So I got a little photograph of where the projector was and i believe there was a story about joe esposito would be the one in the back running the projector system when he wasn't in the bar as you can see making cocktails for all the guys i believe back in the day on the tour the projector room was kind of closed off i don't believe they ever really showed that now the next room we're going to be heading into is the pool room now in 1974 a man named Bill Eubanks, who was a designer, worked with Elvis to completely overtake this room and give it a very unique look. It took a crew of three and about 10 days to cut, piece, and pleat and hang the 350 yards of cotton fabric to the walls and ceiling. Also on this pool table, next time you're there, try and see if you can find the tear that's on the table itself that's still there. This happened when one of Elvis's buddies tried to do a trick shot. I always remember that tidbit from the tour. Now the pool table has been here since 1960, but when Elvis decided to redecorate 1974, this is what it looked like and has looked like since then. Now what's kind of crazy about this room is the fireplace is the only wood burning fireplace in the mansion. Now there are two other fireplaces in Graceland and they are gas burning. Once the fabric was installed, the Presley family stopped using it for fear that this whole thing would catch on fire. Now the last room we're gonna be seeing in the actual house itself is the world famous Jungle Room. Now in 1957, when Elvis purchased Graceland, this was just a screened in porch. Then in 1965, they decided to kind of build that in and add an additional room to Graceland. And then in 72, after he and Priscilla divorced, this was started in the, the beginning of Elvis kind of redecorating in the 70s, Graceland. You know, most guys go through a midlife crisis. Well, he just decided to redecorate his entire house. Now, Elvis did not refer to this room as the jungle room when he lived here. Elvis referred to this always as the den. And after he passed away, I believe it was a journalist or someone who called this place the jungle room. And it's just kind of stuck. And it's become like a pop icon in its own right. But everything you see in this room, Elvis purchased himself. There's a tiki flare. There's so much stuff that kind of reminded him of Hawaii, I'm sure. He loved Hawaii. I love the shag carpet on the floor, even the ceiling. The wood grain, the tiki awesomeness. I'm a big fan of tiki and Elvis and tiki kind of go hand in hand with me. This is also the room where he recorded his final two albums from Elvis Presley Boulevard, Memphis, Tennessee in 1976 and Moody Blue, his final album in 1977. Now in 2016, those recordings were re-released together in an album called Elvis, Way Down in the Jungle Room. So even Graceland and the estate it, you know, they really love the name The Jungle Room. You will see it on t-shirts, you will see it all over the estate. And if you look up Jungle Room, I mean, it's the first thing that comes up. Everyone knows about the famous Jungle Room. But it's funny to me that Elvis just referred to it simply as The Den. And of course, more secret staircases leading you to different places in, in the house. And I love that there's an, a waterfall in the room right against the wall. Little waterfall there. I could totally see Elvis sitting in that big chair and Lisa sitting in his lap and reading a story or, you know, he and the guys going in for those weird timely sessions. Elvis, when he was recording those albums, would do it at weird and random times. There, there were microphones everywhere and all the equipment set up and what a time to really be in that house. I mean, imagine going into the kitchen, making yourself a sandwich and looking over and seeing Elvis recording his 
album right there. Just so cool to me. I, I love the Jungle Room. I really am a big fan. And now we are heading out of the physical house of Graceland. We are going to be exiting to the old carport and going to Vernon's office next. Now this photograph right here is looking at the jungle room, the den as Elvis referred it. And this was screened in back in the day. So I just wanted to show you guys just what it looks like now. But imagine it being a screened in, you know, porch area. And I can, I can kind of see that, you know, stepping down from the kitchen into the screen. Now this is the old carport. Back in the 80s, and I believe even the early 90s, they had cars parked out here. And this is where they stored all of Elvis's cars. This was his carport. Next, we are heading over to Vernon's office. This is where Vernon would handle his son's finances, household bills, and oversee two secretaries replying to fan mail. And I believe Elvis's cousin, Patsy, was one of those who reply to all of Elvis's fan mail. There's a very funny story that I, I was reading about Vernon's office. Apparently Priscilla would come over and hang out with Patsy during business hours and Vernon had this sign placed on the door and it's still there to this day and it says please read and observe no loafing in office strictly for employees only. If you have business here please take care of it and leave. <laughs> I guess uh, Patsy and Priscilla would sit there and chew the fat for her quite some time and Vernon wasn't having any of it. Now this is the outside of Vernon's office. You can see a little play set here. I believe this was Lisa Marie's. Kind of cool to go visit your, your grandfather's office and have your own play place right outside your house. I believe this is the old mailbox, 3764 Highway 51, which is now Elvis Presley Boulevard and the actual office itself. It's really cool. There's a TV in the back and you can see Elvis was sitting right in front of those filing cabinets giving an interview right when he returned back from Germany. And this is the famous interview where they asked him about the girl he was seeing in Germany, which turned out to be Priscilla. Kind of funny how that worked out. This office is also where Elvis, his father, Vernon, gave his final farewell to everyone when they showed and aired Elvis's final concert. It's a very tear-jerking farewell from Vernon, just telling everyone, thank you, we've received all of your letters and everything from the passing of Elvis, and they, they showed Elvis's final concert, and Vernon was sitting against that desk in this very office. I always think about that when I visit. Now, to the right of Vernon's office, you can see this was... Uh, Vernon's smokehouse. He, I, apparently Vernon was into smoking meat and this was also a gun range, a little shooting range for Elvis. He would go in here and practice shooting and I believe there's still bullet holes and, and bullets themselves inside some of those bricks. Kind of cool. Once you leave Vernon's office you see the horses out here. Horses have always been out at Graceland. Elvis had a number of horses and that tradition continues to this day. Now the next building we are heading into is the Trophy Building. As soon as you walk in, you can see a family tree of the Presley family, which is very interesting to me. Now all throughout the Trophy Room is just a mix match of different collectibles and archive things from Elvis's entire life. This is Elvis's first grade crayon box and Elvis's seventh grade report card. Elvis's diploma from Humes High School in Memphis, Tennessee, where he graduated high school. Now, I thought this was very interesting. You don't see a whole lot of Gladys memorabilia. This is one of Gladys's dresses, and there's the photograph that she's wearing the dress right there with Vernon and Elvis. Now, this is Vernon Presley's work pants here. Another thing you don't really see is a lot of archives of Vernon. I believe his last girlfriend kind of took over that estate when he passed. There's also a portable TV in this display. Now this is Elvis and Priscilla's wedding suit and gown, as you can see from their wedding. Very famous, very famous wedding outfits, if you ask me. Everyone's seen that photograph. And I like that you can see the actual height difference between Elvis and Priscilla. Also in the trophy room, they have a number of things, including a gun from Elvis. Elvis really liked guns. This is an investigator badge given to Elvis, naming him a captain in the Denver Police Department. Elvis loved, I could go into a whole tangent about how much Elvis wanted to be a private investigator of drugs, narcotics, and everything. Elvis just wanted to be a private eye. He really did. Now, once you leave the trophy room, you will see the famous kidney-shaped pool. This pool is exactly the way it looked back in 1957. They really did not update this pool ever. So what you see is kind of the way it was, the way it is, and the way it will always be. Now the next building we're gonna be heading into is the racquetball building. And reading off the plaque here, it says, Elvis took up racquetball in the early 1970s, enjoyed the sport so much that he decided to build his own court. 
personal sports complex complete with weight training area on the ground floor, full-size racquetball court, and a jacuzzi and dressing rooms upstairs was completed in 1975. He spent approximately $200,000 on the building and took so much pride and effort that he personally supervised the construction. Now once we head inside, I will show you guys a few things. I love the wood paneling on the outside of the building. On the inside, very 70s. The workout system there, the two leather couches. Of course, there has to be a bar. You get tired of playing racquetball, you gotta have a bar. Now these are the stairs that lead up to the second floor where that jacuzzi is. I would love to see that one day. I don't think anybody's been up there. I love the EP initials here on the side of the the wall as you head into the actual racquetball court itself. Back in the day when you would take the tour, this room might look familiar and new at the same time. They used to have a lot of his jumpsuits in here and the entire wall was covered in all of his gold and platinum records. They've kind of rethought this whole idea and preserved it and brought it back to the way it looked in 1977. I love that. This is one of the last places that Elvis spent the night he passed away. The piano that you see right there is the last piano he ever played before he went back into Graceland and passed away in 1977. Now the last stop on our tour is the Meditation Garden. Now this was designed and built by architect Bernard Grenadier and this was a place that Elvis used to reflect on any problems or situations that arose during his life. He really loved the meditation garden and I believe it's very fitting that he would be placed to rest here. This is also where Elvis's mother, father, grandmother, and grandson are also buried. Now there is a little plaque for his stillborn twin brother Jesse Guerin who passed away in 1935. I visited Jesse Guerin's first resting place in Tupelo, Mississippi. If you would like to see that episode, the link is above. This is Gladys's tombstone here, Vernon Presley Minnie Mae Presley was, was buried here in 1980, and Elvis's grandson, Benjamin Storm, was buried here recently. And this is where you will see the final resting place of Elvis Aaron Presley, born January 8th, 1935, passed away August 16th, 1977. I'm going to read off what it says on the tombstone that his, his father wrote because I really enjoy reading it every time I go. It's very heartfelt. He was a precious gift from God we cherished and loved dearly. He had a God-given talent that he shared with the world, and without a doubt, he became most widely acclaimed, capturing the hearts of young and old alike. He was admired not only as an entertainer, but as the great humanitarian that he was, for his generosity and his kind feelings for his fellow man. He revolutionized the field of music and received his highest awards. He became a living legend in his own time, earning the respect and love of millions. God saw that he needed some rest and called him home to be with him. We miss you son and daddy, and I thank God that he gave us you as our son. TCB, Vernon Presley. Now as a big Elvis fan, to me this is just the best way to kind of say farewell to the house. You definitely can feel his presence in the house next time you do the tour. Kind of take it in, see for yourself. There's definitely a presence there that he left. It'll always be there. One final look at the house. And also, Graceland was put on the National Register of Historical Places. It was built in 1939. If you want to know some more history of Graceland, I did a video on that that I mentioned earlier, the gates of Graceland, talking about its beginnings when it was just a farm, long before Elvis. And one final look at the window, and you can see the security camera of Elvis Aaron Presley. I believe back in the day, they might still have it on the Graceland website. They had a live camera that you could watch from Elvis's room, and this is the camera coming from that window. I got to take a, a photograph out front, and there was no one out there, so it was the perfect time to capture this photo. It was really neat, and I'm glad I got to share my 10th visit. This was my 10th visit in nearly 10 years to Graceland, and I'm glad I got to share it with my wife, Abby, for the holidays. This was a lot of fun. And of course, while I'm there and there's no one around, I had to do a photo comparison. As you can see, I did this photo comparison of me and Elvis right in front of the house. Very cool. I had to do it. Now, I know this video was a little different, but we're going to get back to that day that I was there. Thanks for listening and watching. Well, it's time to say goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Elvis Presley's Graceland. As I said, I'm a huge fan. Trying to film this, take photographs, and do everything was a little tricky. 
but it was a lot of fun and I hope you guys had fun watching. The next time you're here at Graceland, tell them World of Mike has sent you. I will see you guys in the near future. Very excited about the new year and new episodes and new adventures. Till then, stay weird. Goodbye.